Hi guys and welcome. This is Jen Gata Siciliano, artist, memoir writer, bipolar psychiatric survivor, and your host of Not As Crazy As You Think podcast. The place that offers an alternative perspective on mental illness, highlighting creativity, non-conventional healing, and breaking on through to the other side. If you are ready for a new narrative on the mental realm that celebrates crazy and cool without penalty, then Not As Crazy As You Think is for you. Hello, this is Jen Gata Siciliano, your host of Not As Crazy As You Think podcast. Today, I'd like to share a little bit about the absurdity of the biomedical model in psychiatry and what it assumes is true about human consciousness. The mental health industry capitalizes through these biological explanations because it fuels the engine behind their claim that the most effective treatment for mental illness is psychiatric drugs. You don't go to see a psychiatrist to heal your emotional wounds. You see one to get a quick fix for drugs. Most visits in a psychiatrist's office last only about 10 to 15 minutes. You check in, tell them how you felt for the past month or so on their drugs, and they write you a new prescription. A dependency is created through the field, coded insurance claims are submitted, and a lifelong customer is attained. But in reality, our minds are outside a biological framework that simply contains our neurotransmitters. Mental illness is within an area that is non-local, not physical inside the brain. We are not just a skin sack of chemicals. We may have a physical body, but within it and extending from it is the light that embodies the soul and heart. I see each of us as having a unique brain chemistry with a single signature linked to each one of our DNA compositions. Yours is different from mine, and mine is no more chemically clean or dirty than yours. My brain is not a car engine. I am not a walking disease because of imbalanced chemicals in my brain. I am much more than that, but modern scientists have trouble seeing this because of their scientific dogmas. The biomedical model strictly adheres to nature over nurture, or genetics over environment. It ignores social structures, outside stressors, or cultural differences, which influence mental health and mental illness. And without looking at the larger picture, society itself never gets fixed. The public's overwhelming acceptance of this approach in psychiatry shows that people have become convinced there is no free will and that biology determines everything. But we know down deep this is not the way we interpret our world or the thoughts inside our minds or feelings inside our hearts. If we are nothing but biological processes, then these things aren't real. And since psychiatry still stands by its claim that all mental illnesses have a biological basis, they stand in lies. We know that this is not true because the COVID pandemic proved it in real time in our lives that we could all see, witness, and agree upon. I've said it again and again, but it needs to be restated as much as they restate their foolish brainwashing philosophies. COVID mental illness was a result of the pandemic stresses, not the biological side effect that results from the coronavirus upon the individual, which is what they want you to believe. The biomedical model underestimates the complexity of human behavior. It is reductionist in nature, oversimplifying the vastly complex brain and its interaction with its environment. It supports deterministic thinking, which is religious in nature, and with no personal responsibility, there is no personal destiny. So ultimately, you have no control over your life. This is not science, because it denies millions of facts that are in direct opposition to their mechanistic theory. They only accept their own facts to support what they believe, and then they claim they can predict the future. When we assume that these areas are predictive and therefore unchangeable, we are dooming our children to a future with no hope, restricting their freedom of mind and heart, and as a society we are becoming more and more imprisoned. This mechanical universe they claim is our reality embarrassingly falls short of what I imagine the universe consists of, but I'm the one who's crazy. Through the self-fulfilling prophecy, These beliefs become our reality because we take them as already true. With certain expectations come certain outcomes. 
and these things affect our behavior toward ourselves and each other. When feedback returns supporting our preconceived notions, it's reinforced, making it difficult for us to see anything else. The intricacy of our lives is not predetermined. Our worlds are shaped by our choices, lifestyles, upbringings, points of view, world beliefs, socioeconomic backgrounds. The list is extensive. Beyond the way our brains look under a scan, what resides inside our minds and feelings is most important. Materialism cannot explain consciousness because through its own framework, we don't have consciousness that extends beyond the brain. For these theoretical systems to break down, something else needs to first be resurrected. And I believe Rupert Sheldrake is an example of someone in science who can make a difference. In his book, The Science Delusion, which interestingly in America has the title, Science Set Free, 10 Paths to New Discovery, which implies a completely different book. Author of 85 scientific papers and 13 books, Rupert started out as an atheist, and then he visited India in 1968. He then lived in India in 1974, so he became open to new ways of looking at reality, and his view of consciousness was expanded. He explains that people assume the materialist worldview must be true, because it leads to prosperous results in technology and medicine and so on, but this is the default built-in assumption that our entire academic system rides on and benefits from. People believe that science has proven these things, but if you believe these dogmas, you are taking them on faith. The first of these dogmatic assumptions is matter is unconscious. The whole universe is then unconscious, and many scientific philosophers believe that consciousness is an illusion and that we are in fact unconscious as well. In the article, Decoding the Puzzle of Human Consciousness, The Hardest Problem, in the 2018 September issue of Scientific American, Susan Blackmore asks the question, could it really be that we alone have an extra special something, this marvelous inner world of subjective experience? Her answer is ultimately no. In the article, psychologist Julian Jaynes argues that because there is no word for consciousness in the Greek epic, the Iliad, that the Greeks were unconscious, attributing the voices in their heads to the gods. Therefore, until 3,000 years ago, people had no subjective experience. That's an interesting stretch of the conscious imagination. Anyone who has read Greek literature and understands the Greeks' impact on the Western world would see this statement as ridiculous. But within their mechanistic worldview, it stands to reason. Because consciousness cannot be proven through their own materialist worldview, they deny that it's true because it cannot possibly be real in their theoretic construct. They only believe in the empirical evidence that supports their theory, not the experiential. They deny even their own. So anyone who says otherwise, especially a psych patient, is noted as delusional. Scholars dispute nearly every aspect of consciousness. While some do say it can be measured, others deny its existence, calling it mere illusion. As an illusionist, Susan Blackmore believes that what sets us apart from animals is that humans are clever enough to be deluded into believing that there is a conscious I. This isn't science, it's philosophy, and the fact that there is no room for alternative worldviews to enter the conversation proves the racist systemic structures held in place by these beliefs. Because they would never take the shamanic journey seriously. It is just delusional, which implies that entire peoples around the world are insane as well. In the end, the materialist scientists are the only people aware of true reality, even though they can't really say what it is. I will not put my faith in this nonsense. I believe in something larger than their mechanistic chains that imprison us into slavery. No alternatives and no respect for indigenous cultures. Says Rupert, 
To explain consciousness as just arising from unconscious processes in the brain involves a kind of miraculous conjuring of a rabbit out of a hat, something totally different emerging from something that's unconscious, according to the materialist theory. Another dogma, Rupert points out, is nature is mechanistic or machine-like. The machine is the central metaphor, but it's only a metaphor. It's never been proven. Rupert explains that we have a distorted view of nature because of this warped point of view. Prior to the 17th century and the rise of the Age of Enlightenment, the world took it as true that humans were conscious and had souls. Philosopher and scientist Descartes changed that view, believing that while humans had souls, everything else was made up of inanimate machinery. But Rupert suggests that the universe is more like an organism, beginning with the Big Bang like the hatching of an egg. Rupert claims that not only humans are conscious, but every living organism or compound from atoms to the sun all have consciousness in matters of degree and are not simply made up of mechanical processes. Another dogmatic assumption is that your mind is in your brain. This is psychiatry's favorite, and they've been claiming this for years, telling their patients that the chemicals inside their brains are the cause for their mental distress. Rupert explains that there is a plethora of evidence that mind stretches beyond our brains, having fields that stretch out just like a mobile telephone or the fields of a magnet. Our minds are not compressed inside our skulls. I experienced this so clearly in my near-death experience in 1994. The memory of it is more prominent than any other memory in my lifetime, and it occurred 27 years ago. But since I had no empirical evidence, only an experiential story, the institution determined that my claim that God saved my life in India was utterly insane, earning me a hefty mental illness label to call my own and requiring an immediate drug treatment plan that would last a lifetime. I have lived a difficult life under the perpetual insistence of a wrong theory. Rupert Sheldrake instead believes our minds are a kind of tuning system of fields that operate on the brain and through the brain and extend beyond it. The mind is not confined to our brains inside our skulls. This also regards AI and the transhumanism movement that is engineering a system and a means for people to grow into advanced machinery. But if we have a misconception of the brain, if we are not machines, if consciousness works through the brain but not completely explained by the physicality of the brain, then a computer model of the brain would not work. It's more of a science fiction fantasy that can go really bad. Another dogmatic assumption is mechanistic medicine is the only one that works. As the sole approach to healing used by traditional Western medicine, naturally, drug treatment is the best course of action for any mental illness. Most money is funneled to this kind of medicine and not alternatives, which are considered quackery because they do not conform to the mechanistic worldview. Things more holistic assume that the mind, emotions, and social support have to do with the healing process, which they flat out deny. Psychiatry does not understand the mind, but they are using extremely invasive treatment to fix the mechanical brain. People lose everything on these drugs. Their whole lives fly by, and they are incapacitated not by the biological illness, but by the abuse of the drugs. They treat whole human beings like bags of bad genes, but even by their standards, we don't even equal the sum of our genes. The materialist scientists don't believe that any evidence should be heard in favor of something outside the mechanistic scientific worldview, calling it unnecessary, which makes it very difficult for alternative scientific evidence to be considered. But Rupert suggests we are in a transition between the materialistic dogmatic view of science to something new or revised. Rupert believes we are on a cusp of a new phase of science, a convergence of science and spirituality. So far, meaninglessness is the overall worldview they push. 
rather than finding meaning in everything. Believing the universe exists with no purpose is the reason for the world mental health crisis. In the psychiatric drug withdrawal circle, the supporters refer to things as feelings and promote the neuroplasticity of the brain, something that neuroscientists know is true. And they have proof that brains heal after removal of these invasive neurotoxins. Either you look at proof right in front of you, or you look for proof inside your own mind through experience. There is plenty of proof to the contrary. The materialist scientists are the ones living in an illusion, merry-go-round, fairy tale, maybe so universe because they need to be right. These are the same people who are trying to tell me what is real. They deny proof and they have none of their own. For those who believe the mind is more than an illusion and that we are conscious beings, how can these guys continually be the gurus of our modern world? It's time to wake up and imagine something new. Stay tuned for part two, where I go into more of Rupert Sheldrake's Dogmas of Science. Thanks for listening to Not As Crazy As You Think, and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And remember, mental health is attainable for anyone, especially those labeled with mental illness. Until next time, peace out.